an English mathematician came to Cambridge, um, stood up in front of a lecture theatre, gave three talks over the course of three days, and at the end of the last talk, and I think the audience had already got there by this stage, said, and here it is, I've proved Fermat's last theorem. The mathematician in question was Sir Andrew Wiles, and he'd been working in secrecy for seven years on trying to find a proof of Fermat's last theorem. He dreamt about finding a proof ever since he was a child. Um, and then it's, it's an extraordinary story of, of childhood ambition, adult obsession, um, working on a proof that, that took him about 200 pages. And when he came here and he announced the proof, the world went wild. He was on the front page of the New York Times. He was um, interviewed on TV. He was everywhere. He was the world's most famous mathematician because he'd solved, you know, found a proof for the world's uh, most notorious problem. Now that's not quite the end of the story because when you publish something in mathematics or when you come up with a great proof or even a minor proof, you have to have it checked by your colleagues. It's called peer review. And Andrew Wiles' proof was sent out to uh, seven referees. It was such a large proof, it took seven people, in fact, I think even seven pairs of people to check it line by line by line. And somebody found a mistake. And um, you know, some, suddenly, suddenly from being the world's most famous mathematician, um, he was the mathematician who'd made the most famous blunder. Um, yeah, I call it a blunder, but it was a very subtle mistake from, from a, a very great mathematician. Um, but the long and the short of it was the proof didn't exist. You know, unless the proof is perfect and complete, it's not worth anything. Um, Andrew Wiles desperately tried to, to fix the proof. Uh, he looked to uh, one of his former students, I think, Richard Taylor, who was now a, a, a very famous uh, mathematician in his own right. And Richard Taylor, working with Andrew Wiles, tried to fix the proof. And for a long time, uh, it looked like it wasn't fixable. I remember one mathematician described it as trying to fit a carpet in a room where the carpet's too big. So you get the carpet to fit in this corner and it pops up in that corner. You fix that corner, it pops up there. So whatever they were doing, it didn't work. Um, but eventually, uh, it's a story with a happy ending because eventually um, Wiles and Taylor found a fix. And uh, it, it must have been a year of torture for, for Andrew Wiles. But, but eventually he found, he found the complete proof. It was checked again. This time there were no problems. It's been published. And now we have the end of, of a, an extraordinary 350 year old story. The only bit of the story that we, we haven't really finished is that Andrew Wiles' proof is clearly not what Pierre de Fermat had in mind. Um, Fermat couldn't have come up with the proof that Wiles is, is published because Wiles' proof is full of very modern mathematics, full of mathematics that he himself invented. Um, Fermat could never have conceived of that kind of proof. So maybe Fermat made a mistake. I think that's probably the most likely answer. Fermat thought he had a proof, but he didn't. Um, or maybe he really did. Maybe Pierre de Fermat came up with a proof that uses 17th century techniques, relatively simple techniques, but put together in an incredibly clever way. So clever that nobody's ever found Fermat's original proof. Um, so if you're not busy this evening, you might want to go away and try and find Fermat's original proof. I'll leave you with that.